Hey guys, this is Mike, and this is the third video in the LibGDX Box Studio and Tile tutorial. So we're going to continue talking more about Box Studio Basics. And uh, for this video, we're going to talk about collisions and contacts. So those are pretty simple. Um, obviously here we have two objects, and they're colliding with each other. You can see this little contact point being drawn. That just tells you that these two fixtures are colliding with each other. And for this game, we want to be able to determine which fixtures are allowed to collide with which other fixtures. And uh, in order to do that, we have to use uh, collision filtering. Now, um, there are two types of collision filtering. One is bit filtering, and the other is group index filtering. We're not going to be dealing with group index filtering. You can read that in the box to manual yourself if you want, but uh, for this tutorial we're going to concentrate on bit filtering. So the way bit filtering works, it's uh, pretty simple. Um, let's use the game that we have as an example. Uh, we have a platform here. Let's just call that FA. And we also have the box up here. Let's call that FB, fixture A and fixture B. Now, uh, the way bit filtering works is basically you give fixtures two pieces of data. One is the type of fixture that you want to set it as. This is uh, called the category. And the second piece of information is the, uh, the types that this fixture is allowed to collide with. So, given these two pieces of information, we can determine which fixtures are allowed to collide with which other fixtures. For example, if we set this um, platform here to be type 2, and uh, this box to be type 4, we can t uh, specifically tell that these two should collide by saying that this is type 2, this is type 4, this should collide with type 4 fixtures, and this should collide with type 2 fixtures. So this is, uh, this is good to go. There's going to be collision here once this falls down. Um, so yeah, pretty much like that. Um, let's say we had some other fixture here, fixture C, and this was a, let's say a circle, and this was of type 8 and it collides with type 2. Um, so what do you think is going to happen here? This is type 2. This is allowed to collide with type 4. This box would fall and it would stop on top of the platform, but what about this fixture? Is it going to fall through or is it going to stop? Well, the answer is it's going to fall straight through. Why? Because this platform is only allowed to collide with type or it doesn't matter that this is uh, allowed to collide with type 2 and the ground is type 2. It's not allowed to collide with any type 8s. So this ball is going to fall right through. Um, so in order to change that, if we want both of these to stop on the platform, then we have to tell the platform we have to add a type to here, 4 and 8. That way both the box and the ball stop on the platform. So that's, f oh, I forgot. The type, this is called category, and the types to collide with, this is the mask bits. These are all bits, by the way. Um, so let's go ahead and test this out. First off, let's create another fixture, the ball fixture, that we had in the example. Create ball. And uh, we're going to set this to a little bit higher and a little bit to the left of the box. So 220, 153 and 220, and create it. Box body is equal to new world, uh, create body b def, and we're going to use a circle shape for this, C shape. New circle shape, and we're going to set the size of this uh, to radius of 5 and uh, we're gonna set the fixture def shape to that circle shape 
f def dot shape is c shape and then we're going to create that fixture body dot create fixture using that f def boom okay let's see what this looks like okay so you saw that the two fell down and then collided with each other and pushed each other away uh, that happened a little fast so I'm going to slow it down just so you can see it a little slower okay so you can see obviously that everything's colliding with each other the circle collides with the box and the box collides with the ground so there's a circle so we're gonna have it let's say so that both of these collide with the platform but they don't collide with each other so in order to do that obviously we have to set the type and the types it's allowed to collide with so we have to set the category and the mask so first off let's go back into our b2d vars class this is where we keep all our box 2d variables we already have the pixels per meter ratio and over here we're gonna have our category bits so let's have one type for each of the three fixtures that we have these are shorts by the way so two bytes 16 bits which means we can only have 16 different categories uh, in the example we have the ground to be 2 the box to be 4 and the circle to be 8 so let's do that short uh, bit ground is gonna be 2 um, short bit box is gonna be 4 and the ball is going to be type 8. Now you're probably wondering why don't I use like 5 or something. Well the problem is these are all bits and since it's a 16 bit I have to specify. The default category for every fixture is going to be 1 but I can specify differently. Um, for example the ground is going to be this bit, second bit, and the box is going to be this third bit and the ball is going to be this fourth bit. So, ground, box, and ball. All the way at the end here. Um, so, if I did something weird like 7, then what I'm basically doing is I'm saying that this bit ball is three categor four categories wide. Wait. One, two, four, no, not this. Three categories wide. So that just doesn't make any sense. How could this be three categories? So you have to be aware, use only the bits. So that's powers of 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, etc. And try not to use the default, which is 1. So just set it to 2, 4, 8. So we have that set up, 2, 4, 8. Now let's actually set each of the fixtures category types. The platform is going to be fdef.filter.categoryBits this is going to be b2dbars.bitGround I'm just going to copy and paste these the falling box is going to have category bit of um, box and the ball is going to have category bit of ball so now each of our three fixtures have different types ground, box, and ball now we want to have it so that again the box collides with the ground the ball collides with the ground but they don't collide with each other so what we have to do is now set the mask types allowed to collide with so for the ground the ground is allowed to collide with the box and the ball that's four and eight so we're gonna set that over here fdef filter dot this time we're gonna use mask bits it's allowed to collide with both the box and the ground, uh, the ball. This is a bit bitwise or, by the way. So you should know your bit operators: a or b, a and b, and not a, stuff like that. So just know your bit operators first before you continue. Um, so the ground is allowed to collide with the box and the ball. The box is allowed to collide with the uh, the ground and the ball is also allowed to collide with the ground so I'm just putting that in there so you can see I don't really need it but just to make it clear what I'm doing 
So let's test this out now. Boom. Okay, so you can see here that the ball and the box both collide with the ground, but not each other, because their uh, mask bits say otherwise, that they can't collide with each other. They can only collide with the ground. So that's pretty much how bit filtering works. Um, so, you know, if you don't specify the mask bits, that just means that it collides with everything because the default value is negative one, which um, pretty much means that the mask is going to be just one, 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 16 ones in a row, and that just collides with everything. So, um, so that's going to be it for uh, bit filtering, collision filtering. Now we're going to go on to contacts, and if you run the thing here, you can notice that there are two contact points being drawn. One between the uh, ball and the ground and one between the box and the ground. So that's two different contacts. We're gonna handle our own contacts here. So over here in our handlers package we're gonna create our contact listener. My contact listener and we're going to implement box duties contact listener class implements contact listener import that. Now the contact listener has four methods begin contact oops wow contact see and it also has end contact and it has pre-solve contact C and manifold M which is just like the info about the contacts like position uh, points of contact and normals and stuff like that contact uh, C, post solve, contact C, and contact impulse. This is just the info about how the collision is handled. Um, we're not going to really worry about pre solve and post solve. What we want are begin and end contact, but I'm still going to explain what these two are. So basically, begin contact gets called when two fixtures start to collide. So the moment two fixtures overlap each other, this gets called. End contact obviously is the exact opposite, and uh, this gets called when two fixtures are no longer colliding with each other. And pre-solve and post-solve, um, in order to understand these, you can think of collision as being two steps. Um, first there's the detection, and there's the handling. So obviously detection is when it detects that two fixtures first get uh, collide with each other and handling is what you do about that collision. The most common thing to do is just to have the two fixtures bounce off of each other like you saw the ball bounce off the box so that's handling. Pre-solve happens in between these two so you can do stuff like once you detect the collision you can change the way it's handled or whatever or decide not to handle it stuff like that and post-solve happens after but uh, we're not going to be doing any of that stuff with pre-solve and post-solve, so I'll just leave these down here and ignore them. So let's go back into play, and we're going to have the world use our new contact listener. Set contact listener, new my contact listener. There we go. So we're, we now have the world using our custom contact listener, which pretty much does nothing because it has nothing in it. So like I said before, begin contact gets called when two fixtures begin to collide. So if I do system.out.println begin contact here and I run the game, uh, what should happen is that begin contact gets printed out twice because there are two contacts that happens. So let's see if that works. Boom. Okay, so these two fixtures fall onto the ground and create two contacts, and you see here begin contact gets called twice. Pretty simple. Right? Um, yeah, so that's pretty much how it works. Let's do one for end contact as well. System.out.println end contact. And you can see that the begin and end contacts work. And we're going to do that by making the ball bounce and we're gonna do that by setting the restitution to let's say 0 0.2 
see what happens there. Okay, you saw the ball bounce once, so it began contact, then it bounced off of it, ending the contact, and then it uh, rested back onto the platform. So that's begin contact again. So pretty simple. That's pretty much how the contact listeners work. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get rid of that restitution now. So over here, uh, we have this contact class. This contact class is um, basically a class that holds information about the two fixtures colliding with each other. Um, let's get rid of this stuff. So when we do fixture fa is equal to c dot get fixture a and fixture fb is c dot get fixture b we know that these two fixtures fa and fb have just started to collide with each other now as far as i know in order to figure out which fixture is which you have to do that yourself and the most common way to do that is to do like fa dot uh, get user data so for example um Hmm. Um, you want to set user datas for your fixtures in order to identify them. So if we go back to play, uh, we have the platform. We can do fdef.set. Where is the user data? Hmm. Oh, it's not in the definition? That's weird. I guess we can put it in here. Fixture. Fixture. Is equal to that and then we can do fixture dot set user data there we go and uh, one of the most common user data you can put on fixtures is just a string to identify them so for the platform we're gonna call this ground set user data and the user data again is just some variable that you could put anything you want in it and you can always get it back and one of the most common things to do with user data for fixture is the ID so we want to ID that. So for the following box um, over here, we can just set the user data to, uh, let's call this one box. And over, wait, what did I just do? This is the ball. Wow. This is the ball. And over here, this is box. Set user data uh, box. So let me just move the console out of the way. I can't see anything. Okay, so here I don't really need to make a fixture. That's not necessary. Set user data ground. Okay, so we've set the platform fixture to have the ground user data, the box to have the box user data, and the ball to have the ball user data. And we are only using these user data variables to identify these fixtures for the contact listener. Um, Okay, so if we go back into the contact listener over here, we can identify the two fixtures that are colliding. If we do fa.printout fa.getUserData and fb.getUserData, oops, what's going on? User data. Here we go, and uh, I'm going to bring the console back. It should print out the identifications of these two fixtures. So let's test this. There we go. So we see that fixture A is the ground, and fixture B is the box, and then for the second one, fixture A is the ground again, and fixture B is the ball. I don't know how box 2D decides which fixture is which, like why can't fixture B be the ground, but whatever. I don't care. Uh, as far as I know, you have to determine which fixture is which yourself, so you can do that by identifying giving a fixture an identity using uh, user data and then getting it back uh, when you check the contacts. So this is pretty much going to be it for this video. Um, in the next video I'm going to talk about sensors, fixture sensors, and how to use that to have the player jump. So yeah, that's going to be it for this video and thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.